Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to a new series called Tools of the Trade. So in this new series, I'm going to be introducing you to some of the great tools that are available to you that you may not have heard about before. And we're going to be starting with none other than Compiler Explorer. So Compiler Explorer, it's available at godbolt.org, and I'll go ahead and link that in the description. And it's a great site for looking at source and assembly of something like C++ side by side. So in this case, we have a very simple function. All it is is it, uh, it's called square. It takes an integer number um, and it returns the square of that number, so the number times itself. And we can see based on this color highlighting, we can see how you know, individual lines in our source code correspond to um, individual or multiple lines of our assembly. So it's a great way to see how your high level code translates down to low level code. And we don't just have to look at it for, say, a specific compiler. It actually supports a number of different compilers here. So we could look at, you know, say, GCC trunk. So this would be kind of the experimental version of GCC, which as of right now, it's GCC 10. Um, we could also look at it, uh, see how the comp uh, compiler generates code for, say, um, Clang 9 or even something like Clang trunk. Um, so it's a great way if you want to see, you know, what your code is going to look like on different platforms. Um, it's a great way to test it out here. We can also pass, you know, compiler options here as well. So just like you would pass from your command line, say, you know, different optimization levels, I could type in something like dash O3, and we could see, you know, you know, what does an optimized, you know, function, or what does this optimized square function looks like, uh, look like. And so it just looks like, uh, you know, I'm all, um, which is, makes sense because it's just some number times itself, right? So it just should just translate to a single um, integer multiplication instruction. Okay, so that's all pretty easy. Um, let's look at another example just you know, to show off how we can better understand something like C++. So the first thing we'll do is we'll just show off, say, templates. So templates themselves um, don't correspond to any source code. Um, they're just a code generation tool. So if we go ahead and write a function, say, template type name t, and then we, uh, we go ahead and make a function, let's call it add, and all it will do is it will add, it'll take the sum of two numbers, um, both of type T, so we'll have TA and TB, and it will just return something, um, say A plus B, right? Simple function like that. It's not going to generate any assembly. But if we make another function, say a function called test, and we go ahead and use our templated function. So in this case, why don't we do um, int A is equal to add of one and two, we see that this is going to go ahead and generate a version of this templated function for integers, right? So it's instantiated with type int. And if we did this, say, with another type, right? So let's do it with, um, let's say, a floating point type. So we can just write float b is equal to add, and then say 1.5f, um, comma, something like 2.5f, right? We see we'll get um, another in, uh, instance of this function, this uh, this time for floating point numbers, right? So it's a great way where we can, you know, you know better understand how things like templates work in C++. But we can do a lot more than just, um, right, just look at you know, how basic functions work. We can also use Compiler Explorer um, to test out, say, the new features of C++. So why don't we go to GCC trunk, and one of the new features in C++ 20 is um, this two array. So we can convert something um, to an array, um, which would be the std array in C++. So let's make a function called, say, test. And we could say, you know, auto a, and first we have to, of course, include array up here. And we can say, you know, auto A is equal to std to array, and then we can just pass it, say, you know, one, two, three, right? And you see that it will go ahead and generate the code um, for an array, uh, to an array for us. But you see, it's not actually doing anything right now. It's actually giving me an error. And so if I go ahead and click on output, um, or let's go ahead and make this a void function as well, because uh, we don't want it to return anything. But we end up getting a, uh, you know, a warning here, basically saying that it's only available from C++ to A onwards. So again, right, we can go ahead and just pass that in as a command or as a compiler option. So we can say dash dash um, std is equal to C++ to A. And now our compiler um, will go ahead and generate that code for us. And you see it just generates an array for us, loading in the values 1, 2, and 3. So this compiles just fine. And we can actually also run code in Compiler Explorer. So let's go ahead and exit out of here. And let's go ahead and just do, say, hello world. So let's include IO stream here. We can go ahead and get rid of uh, this code. And let's make it, instead of test, we need a main function for a C++ program. 
So we'll make a function int main, and all it will do is std cout, and it will go ahead and say, you know, hello world with a newline character. And so, you know, by itself, it's just going to generate the code for say hello world. But if we go ahead and uh, if we look at our output, so the compiler returns zero, that just means it compiled successfully. But we can also select this um, execute the binary, and you see we'll go ahead and run the code after compiling it, and we get hello world, right? So it's a great way to look at that, um, or a great way to do these small tasks. So one, uh, a couple of final things we can do is if we wanted to say share this code, so share, you know, a link to Compiler Explorer, we could go ahead and do, you know, share, and we can get a link to a specific um, code sample, right? So if I go ahead and um, I can just say open this in a new tab, it will just take me directly to say this generated code sample, right? So this is a great little feature. Um, another thing we can do is we can look at more languages than just say C++. So I do a lot of GPU programming. So one of the other things we can do is we can look at, say, some CUDA code. So this is just a very simple function um, that just computes the square of a bunch of different um, numbers. And you see that it goes ahead and generates the PTX. Um, so this is the virtual ISA for um, NVIDIA GPUs. And you see it goes ahead and generates that on the other side. We can select between, say, different versions of NVCC. So it looks like it goes down to 9.1 up to, you know, 10.1. So we can see how, you know, different versions of PTX get generated. So this is just a brief introduction, uh, introduction to, to Compiler Explorer. It's a really great tool. There's a lot more features in here as well in terms of if you want to look at, you know, different parts of the code, um, it, what you want to filter out. So if we go back to, say, the C++ example, you can see we can get rid of you know, once we start getting rid of a lot of the filtering out of things, you know, we start getting what we'd normally get if we did something like object dump. Um, and even if we want to see, say, you know, you know, the hex numbers that this corresponds to, or for the individual instructions as well. But this is just a brief introduction to Compiler Explorer. As always, if you want to check out any of the code for any of the other series, check it out at github.com slash coffee before arch. Or if you have any suggestions of tools that you would like to see, you know, maybe shown off in this series, just shoot me a message. But as always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.